Okay, you can ask some questions. You can ask some question in the chat, but uh, sometimes it is better to interrupt me directly because uh, sometimes I don't see uh, the discussion in the chat when I'm talking. So don't uh, don't hesitate to 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 interrupt me during the, the lectures if you have some questions. Okay, all the questions are welcome. So as I told you, so this course is devoted to some uh, some kind of. Uh, stochastic processes, which are called the Markov decision processes. And uh, these are special cases of um, Markov chains, which are inhomogeneous in time. And uh, after some general presentation of these uh, Markov decision processes, with some, mainly it will be based on some uh, optimization problem for this, uh, for this kind of system. I will turn to some application to different problems of finance. And uh, okay, I will not um, give you some general um, some general um, theory of Markov decision processes, and I will concentrate only on discrete time Markov decision processes. So, in fact, what you need to follow this course is some uh, background in um, probability theory with uh, measure theory, and also some knowledge about uh, conditional expectation. Um, Markov, Markov processes that I will make some recall and Markov theory that I will recall also. Or maybe you, you don't have the, the background in Markov theory, but I will use only a little bit of Martin bits. So I will uh, start today. I will mainly concentrate around some um, giving some, um, some general presentation of what I will do in the course and of um, some generalities about uh, Markov processes and Martin bits. And conditional expectation. So, um, okay, so the contents of the course is the following. Uh, so I will start today with some introduction. I will do it probably today also some um, the theory of some basic theory of Markov processes and also of some Markov theory. I will not prove everything concerning Markov theory uh, because I will not use so much this Markov theory. And then we will uh, enter really into the um, topic of the course, which is a finite horizon Markov decision processes in discrete time, in fact, uh, to be more precise. And uh, then I will introduce some modelization of financial markets. Um, and then we will see in the last uh, part of the course, some, uh, some problems, some financial optimization problems where we will use, in fact, of uh, these, um, um, these uh, um, finite horizon, um, finite horizon Markov decision processes as some tools to solve this optimization problem in finance. So um, let me give you some um, general introduction about what is a Markov decision process. Uh, basically, okay, it is in fact a Markov decision process is just some uh, Markov process usually in images in time, but which has some, some particularities which make them a bit um, a special class of a special kind of mark of a mark of um, process. So we are in discrete time. So the time is indexed by N. So you go from step N to step N plus one and so on. Uh, okay, if somebody want to ask some question, no. Okay, so it's just because I'm hearing some noise, so I imagine that somebody wants to ask some questions, but uh, please ask all the questions that you want. Okay, so um, what, is a, what is a thing is that, um, maybe I can do it here. Um, so here we will assume that uh, we have some um, horizon time, capital N. So it means that um, his, um, his, uh, we will consider the process evolving only on some uh, time between one and capital N, and capital N is fixed. The reason for which it is called horizon time uh, Markov decision process, but a marginal theory exists also for um, Markov decision processes, which are, we, do, don't, we don't have some horizon time. So it means that we can let the system evolve until the end and uh, at some point it will stop. But you don't decide 
in advance when it will stop. So here we consider only this case, horizon time, uh, which is fixed. And uh, the time is discrete, as you see. So your process will evolve from time one, time two, time three, to time and so on. And the theory exists is also existing in continuous time, but it is more complicated. So we have to start with this, uh, this discrete time setting. And of course, okay, n and plus one means it is that you, are, you fix some time step in your process. So here one means maybe one millisecond, maybe one second, maybe one hour, maybe one day, depending on the modelization that you are considering. Okay, so you have your system and uh, you have some, your system, so the state of your system is described by some uh, random variable at time n, which is called xn. And then uh, how it will, um, what will happen is that there is some uh, controller, okay, some body or some agents, economical agents or some institutions and so on, which can make some actions. We can perform some actions on your system. And the action is usually at time n is denoted by a n. Okay, this action can be random and follow some, um, some specific law. And due to this action, uh, what, will, what will happen is that your state xn will be transformed into the new state x n plus one at time n plus one. Okay, because you are doing this action a m. And when you do this action a m, the agent receives some reward that it is denoted by Rn at time n, which depends on the previous state here and on the action which is performed. So the reward can be positive, so we can interpret it as some money, but it can also be negative in some, in, some, in some situations. So it means that in this case, you have some debts which are accumulating or something like that. And uh, so, but you have some reward here, which is at time n, and you come back to some new state, xn plus one, and then again, you start the same thing. The controller will perform some action at time n plus one, an plus one, and you will receive some new reward, rn plus one of xn plus one, an plus one. So this reward can depend on time, okay? And what is the goal? The goal is to try to optimize the total accumulated reward at time capital N. So each step you have some reward, time one, time two, and so on. And at final time, you have some final, um, final amount of money, if you wish, and you try to optimize. Optimize can mean usually in the, we will make the theory where you try to, 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 to maximize the total, uh, the total cumulative reward but uh, in some applications, sometimes it is you try to minimize, okay? But it is quite a similar. You have just to define the reward with sign minus in front and you come back to the previous situation. Okay, so this is a Markov decision process. I will give some precise definition later. And, uh, but here I give some example of, uh, of uh, problems, of optimization problems we are interested in. So the first problem is some consumption problem, and it will be um, we will spend a lot of time as some uh, typical example on which we will apply the theory. Uh, so in this uh, consumption uh, problem, uh, so you have n period of time, n discrete time period of time, and um, you have some uh, investor. We can decide uh, how much of the capital that he has he can consume. So the um, the capital is at a time n. So xn is the, uh, the capital at time n that the investor has, okay? And then he decide to consume, to consume some, um, some, amount, of, uh, some amount of his capital at time n, and it would be given by some function fn of xn. And uh, with this uh, money that we will uh, consume, he can do many things, and then he has some benefit, which is expressed to some utility function um at time n, 
so which is here when it is called some iterative function i will come back also later it is the, so you could think that un are just uh, the identity function saying that okay you consume that and uh, then you have the benefit you consume fn of xn as the money and so the benefit is fn of xn but in fact it is a bit more, more from modernization it is more complicated than that because sometimes when you accumulate a, a lot of money you don't it is not so for example not so useful to to it is not so benefit benefit for you to have so much money so but i will come back to to, to this point uh, later so uk of fk of xk is uh, so in some sense uh, represents the um, the interest that you have in the consumption fk of xk that you do at time k and so here it is a total um total um total benefit that uh, you have during this uh, time period until time n minus one and this is the final one okay and what is the, the, the so I have to describe afterwards, I have to describe how XK is evolving. Okay, it will be described by some, um, some dynamics, stochastic dynamics. And what you do is that you want to optimize this expectation. So here is expectation starting from some initial capital, which is X, among all the strategies that you can um, perform. Okay, and of course, the strategy, as you see, so strategies here, it is, in fact, the actions that I was mentioning before. And uh, this strategy, this amount of money that you can consume, of course, it has to be less than the capital which is available. You cannot consume more than what you have. And so you try to find what is the, the F0, F1, Fn minus one, these actions that you can perform on the money that you have in your, um, in your pocket in order to maximize this benefit that you can uh, get from this, um, from this money that you have. Okay, so this is called the consumption problem and uh, we will discuss uh, later many times this, uh, this problem. So it is a basic one. So some other problem that I would like to mention is this mean variance problem, which was, uh, which was considered in the 50s, so it is some quite older problem. Uh, you can imagine that you have some investor and uh, at each time he has some portfolio with some uh, assets in the portfolio, some actions. And uh, so we assume that he has D, D assets and um, the value of the portfolio is Xn. And uh, the prices of the assets, of course, evolve in time. And um, in time, independently of the investor's action, okay? Because uh, it's just some agent which is not so powerful, so he cannot uh, change uh, the, the, market, the evolution of the market by doing the, what he is doing with his uh, portfolio. And uh, what the investor uh, has to do is that at each time M, he can uh, decide to redistribute the money that he have in his portfolio um, uh, um, um, between the different, um, different assets. So for example, he has asset one and the asset two, it has one half of the asset one, one half of the asset two, but you say, oh, okay, maybe the asset two, the price will increase. So I prefer to uh, decrease this uh, amount of money in the asset one of one half, I put it on one third, and I do two thirds to the second asset. And doing that, it is modifies the value of the portfolio because the asset prices are changing. So, okay, it is not under its control. Under its control is only the way that is organizing the portfolio. And then after uh, some time, you will have some, at final time n, you will have some value of the portfolio, X capital N. And uh, what you want to do is to uh, maximize this, uh, maximize this uh, expectation of Xn, okay, in average. But here uh, we can impose some constraint, for example, because, okay, it is just some maximization in average. It means that you have some fluctuations and that uh, maybe the, the investor is not, uh, doesn't like so much the risk. So he can try to avoid to have too much fluctuations in, the, in his, um, in his uh, evolution of the portfolio. So he wants to, to find the best strategy in order that 
at least it will get some, in average, some money which is bigger than threshold, mu. But in order to reduce the risk, you want to minimize the variance of Xn. Okay, variance of Xn, you want Xn, sorry, you want to minimize this variance because the variance represents the risk, the variations, the fluctuations along, among, um, around the mean. Okay, so it is good to say that uh, you want to maximize the uh, expectation of Xn, but maybe this expectation will be large, but also with a big variance. So it means that there is some risk that you will lose a lot of money. So this is a bit different from the previous um, problem because in the previous problem, you were only trying to uh, maximize the expectation of, um, of, your, um, of uh, the money that you have. Here, you try to maximize, you try to minimize the variance. So you have some constraint, you say, I want to have the best uh, expectation. At least I have some threshold, mu. I want at least this money, but I want, don't want to take so, so much risk. So it is a bit different from the previous one. It is constraint. You add some constraint to the optimization. Okay, some other uh, example that we could consider in this uh, setting is uh, okay it is a pricing of american options i could say also the pricing of or european options it is a um, it is a different problem but it is also can be also done by the mark of decision process theory um so i don't know if you know what is some option but uh, say um, for example um, let me take the example of um, the option which is just um, say it is called a call so on the market, you have some um, you have some asset with some price which is evolving with time. Okay, you can it is a random prices, and when you have a call, it is uh, it is option call. We call option. So there are several different kind of options, but I just mentioned this one call option. You mean that, for example, if the price at time n of the asset is x n, then uh, when you um, when you have some call option, it means that you can um, buy the you can buy the asset at a price which is determined in advance and say k, okay. And then in the American option, what you do is that you can uh, use okay. So the option is a is a right. It is not some obligation. So you are not. It is not necessary to use it. It is not. Um, it is. It is allowed to not use the option. It is just some permission that you have that when you use the option, you can buy the asset, whatever the price of the asset is, to a fixed price in advance, which is k. It is for call options to buy to buy at fixed price. And uh, so, what does it mean? It means that if at time n you decide to um, to use the option, for example, if x n is uh, bigger than k. So the price of the the price, the real price in the market of the asset is bigger than the, the exercise price of the option. So what you have to do is that you say, okay, I will, since I have the right to, um, to, 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 to buy the option at price K, I will, I will buy this asset at, at, uh, at the price K and I will sell it in the market at the uh, price XN. So in this way, you will, your benefit if you do it at time N will be Xn minus k. Okay. If k is less than Xn, so it means that you could um, you could buy the option. I'm sorry, okay, it is. I wrote the same thing. Sorry. Um, now, if uh, Xn is less than k. So it means that you could buy the option at price K, but it is not a very useful to use the option because the price is lower, it is Xn. So what you what will be the benefit in this case, it will be zero. So when you use this option at time N, the benefit will be Xn minus K plus, okay? This is a notation that we'll use in the, in the following. So it is a maximum between Xn minus K and zero. Okay, it is a benefit that you can get by using the option at time n. Now the difference between some, so what is called 
European option and American option is that in European option, you decide in advance at which time you will have the right to use his, um, his option. So you, you have some horizon time N and in European option, European option, it is at time end that you have to use option. You don't have the choice to use it before. In American option, you can use it at any time before end or end, if you wish. So you have more, more, uh, more, uh, more uh, freedom in the American options than in European options. So it means also that the American options are more expensive than the European options. Because of course, to, to use this option, which is you have to, you have to, to buy, you have to buy the option. And uh, so here also we see that this um, problem of uh, American option to decide at which time you have to, um, to buy, to, to use the option or or at which price you have to sell the option. If you are the seller of the option, what is the price that you have to, to sell the option? Because when, you, when the, the, the buyer of the option uh, decide to use the option, of course, if he, in his case here, of course, you will have to pay to him some extra money. So you will lose some money if you are the, 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 the person who was uh, selling the option. So you have to decide as you advance, what is the price that you have to, to, to sell the option. And this is uh, what is called the pricing problem of um, options. And again, fees can be encapsulated in the mark of decision process. Uh, so, and uh, okay. Um, so what is a bit uh, different from the other one in these American options is that here you can, you see, you are trying to maximize over all the times before um, zero on capital N. So it is a bit different from the other one where it is only the final time, which is really important. You just look at the final time and you try to maximize something. Here, you can try to maximize over all the times. And the last uh, problem is a famous one, which is called the bandit problem. In, in this um, bandit problem, you imagine that you have uh, two slot machines and with two arms, and uh, there is some success, probability success, which is B1 and B2 for the matching one and the matching two, but you don't know this probability of success, B1 and B2. And at each stage, you have to decide which machine to use and, and if the arm wins, you get one euro. If the one uh, loses, you get uh, you you lose one euro. And so it means that uh, okay, depending on you have to find some strategy in order which machine you have to use. At the beginning, you try it with the machine machine one, for example. Then you observe that it doesn't work so much. So maybe it is better to use machine two. But what is the best strategy? How many times you have? How many times you have to use the arm one before to decide to use the arm two? Okay. And this is uh, what is different from the other ones. It is what is called some um, partially observable mark of decision problem because you don't know in advance this probability B1 and B2. So it is still a class which is different from, um, from the three previous examples. Okay. Are there are questions about that or everything is clear? Yes. Uh, so you said that uh, will we study uh, in, uh, traditional probabilities in these problems because as in, we next. Uh, can you repeat because I was not hearing very well because you were you got the microphone. Oh, but... sorry. So the question is. Uh, Will we discuss the transition probabilities in these problems? Because uh, we saw only rewards. Yes, it will be from okay. The, we will form, formalize this, um, all these kind of problems in some uh, general theory using the probability theory, mainly the Markov uh, Markov chain theory. 
Um, okay, here it is uh, just some examples which are not with the formalization, mathematical formalization. But now, later I will pass to the formalization in mathematics. But all these kinds of uh, problems that I mentioned here, these examples, are encapsulated in the theory of Markov decision process. But there are some specificities that are a bit different. You see the optimization problem are not exactly the same depending on the, the models. The models are encapsulated belongs to Markov decision processes, but the kind of optimizations that you try to do are different in each case. Does it reply to your question or you wanted to know something? Yeah, it's fine. Thanks. It's Thanks. Fine. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so um, so I will maybe I will not introduce Markov decision processes today, but uh, first I would like to come back uh, maybe briefly, maybe, I don't know, it depends on your background, on Markov processes and uh, Martingale's. So I don't know if you know Martingale's theory or not. I think I, uh, I assume that you didn't know Martingale's theory. I will not use so much about Martingale's theory, but maybe I was, um, I was confused. Maybe you know very well his, Mar his Martingale's theory, so. It's better that I recall everything, yes. I don't know Martingale's margin theory. Okay, good. So, uh, so I was right, so it's good. I will not use a lot. I could perform some course on Martingale theory. It will occupy a, a lot of time, but I will just use very basic things on Martingale, not so much. And so I will just uh, mention two theorems on Martingale's. Um, and we will perform some exercises also. So it is not the main topic of the course, Martingale theory. So I will start with um, a certain number of uh, definitions that uh, maybe you have seen before. Um, so usually I will denote, um, um, I will denote um, the probability space, the underlying probability space on which I define all the random variables that I would consider as processes and so on by omega fp, so omega is a sample space, f is some sigma field, sigma algebra, and p is a probability, a probability on this space omega. So sigma field is clear for everybody, yes? Or sigma algebra depends on that. Yes. Yes, okay, good. So what is a stochastic process? I will sh should say a discrete time stochastic process because I will consider only discrete time, is a collection of random variables indexed by the time, small n, where n is some integer. And uh, a priori, these uh, random variables are not only real random variables, they can be evaluated with E, which is some measurable space. Any measurable space could be R, could be RD, or usually it could be R, RD, or something like that, but, or a discrete space, but it could be marginal than that. And uh, so it is what I call a stochastic process, discrete time stochastic process with values in E, in fact, state space is E. So what is a filtration now? Filtration is, uh, is a, is a mathematical, mathematical notion of information in probability theory. So it represents the information that you have at each step of time N. So it is just a collection of, um, of um, of a sigma field of sigma algebra. Okay, it is synonymous for me, sigma field or sigma algebra. Okay, I use both, um, both, uh, both terms, and which is increasing with respect to, um, to the inclusion. So F0 is included in F1, included in F2, included in Fn, and all of these sigma fields are included in the big uh, sigma field of um, big sigma field um, of, the, of the priority space. And uh, so it means that at each time you get more and more information. So a typical example of filtration is uh, the filtration, the, what is called the natural filtration of uh, some um, say of a stochastic process. Imagine that you have stochastic process Xn, so you can think for example of Xn as, um, I don't know, Xn is the price of some asset at time n. Okay, and, uh, 
And then the natural fluctuation is the sigma field, which is generated by uh, the sequence of random variable until time n. So sigma of x0, xn. So it is the sigma field generated by the random variables x0, xn, which is, if you would prefer, it is a set of, um, of events, the A in F, um, which depend only on x0, xn. And of course, you see that this is a filtration and represents the information that you can get by observing the market until time n. If you observe the market until time n, you will have access to the price of time zero, the price of time one, price of time n, and then you can, um, you can know everything about any function which is depending only on x zero, xn, is available to your knowledge at time n. And uh, so if you have some random variable, which is measurable with respect to this uh, sigma field, then it means that it is a deterministic function of x0, x2, xn. And then by observing the, the market, you have the information to decide what is the value of this uh, random variable. So it represents the information that you get uh, step by step. And as you can see, uh, of course, since uh, each time you include it in this uh, sigma field generated by the random variable, one more random variable at time n plus one, it is x0, xn, xn plus one. So we have one more run variable. So it is some increasing uh, sequence of sigma fields. And usually it is denoted by F and X. It is called the natural filtration of the process X. Um, okay. So it is a second notion, some other notion that uh, probably you have seen if you um, follow it some uh, uh, cross on mark of uh, processes is the notion of uh, stopping time. So a stopping time is just a random variable with uh, values in, um, in N, but we can also take the infinite values. Okay, and uh, so it is a random variable which value is N uh, union infinity. So infinity is some extra point that we add to N. And it is a stopping time is the information, is the stopping time be, uh, less than N, belongs to the um, sigma field Fn. So it means, in other terms, intuitively what it means, stopping time, means that um, stopping time, you can decide by knowing, the, by knowing the thing until time n, you can decide if your stopping time was before n or not. Okay, this, is, this property means that by knowing what happens until the time n. So you can imagine, for example, that Fn is a natural filtration of some process. You can decide if tau is less or equal to n by observing the market until time n. And typically when I mention this problem of the, of the American options, where you have to use or not use the option, okay? In fact, it is, uh, it is a represented this time at which you will have to use this American option is a stopping time because you have to decide if you have to stop or not to use that, the option or not to use by observing the market until time n. So you have to be able to decide if tau is less or equal to n by knowing only fn. Um, okay, still some vocabulary that you have probably seen before. We said the stochastic process Xn is Fn adapted, adapted respect to the filtration Fn. If for any time n, Xn is Fn measurable. Okay, so it depends only on the information that you have until time n. So in the case where Fn is just uh, some, um, some, uh, some natural filtration of some other process, say Fn is Fny, where Y is some other stochastic process. In this case, what means Xn is Fny measurable, it means that Xn is a deterministic function of Y0, Y1, Y2, Y2, Y3, Yn. Okay, it is, a, a, it is equivalent. So it depends the value of Xn depends only of uh, the information that you have until time n. And a stochastic process Xn is called Fn predictable. 
if in fact okay predictable why predictable it is means that you observe the, the thing until time n minus one and by observing until n minus one you can say what is the value of x n so the step after afterwards so in the case where you imagine that you are in a situation where fn is the natural filtration of some process y it means that if xn is fn minus one measurable it means that xn is some deterministic function say h of y zero y n minus one n minus one so it depends only on the past uh, until um until time n minus one. so it's the reason for which it's called predictable you can predict the future by knowing only the the thing until the previous time okay and the last notion which is uh, very important that i will use several times is the notion of um, um, the notion of um, of a probability transition. Oh, okay, stochastic transition kernel. Okay, so what it is? It is uh, just you, you you take some two spaces, two measure, measured space. So the first is phase one, phase e, with some sigma field um, uh, calligraphic e. And you take some other measurable space here, A, and the stochastic kernel. So we will show precise from E to A, but several times I will not say it would be quite evident from what to what it is. So it is mapping, which depends on two variables. And the first variable B is in A, so in the sigma field of this space, um, capital A. And the second variable x is in E, so in the state space E. And uh, to given uh, some event B, okay, B is included in is uh, some element of the sigma field calligraphic A, and x is a point of the state space E, you associate some number between zero and one, and which is denoted usually like that. Okay, it's just uh, some notation. So it is just a function of B and X. But uh, because later we'll see with the um, interpretation, it is some kind of conditional expectation. And which has two properties. So the first property is that if you fix X, you fix as a, as a variable, which is here for any X in E, then this guy, this application from A, to zero one because you are valued in zero one is a probability measure on the first space. Okay, by fixing x, you get for each x you have a different probability measure. And if uh, now if you fix the b, you fix b here, this map which to the point x send this number between zero and one q b given x is measurable measurable for the sigma field uh, on A, of course. Um, okay, and then several times, but uh, sometimes it will, be, it will be a bit different. Several times it is A is the same as it, in particular in the Markov decision processes, it will be like that. Um, so we just say, okay, so the correct sentence should be stochastic transition kernel from E to A. But several times we forget we will forget uh, some words in this sentence just saying stochastic kernel okay but uh, the situation so you have two properties one express that when you fix one one run one viable then you have a probability when you fix the other one it has to be measured and this thing is very useful in order to define markov processes there are some questions on all of this definition, maybe some of the definition you have seen it uh, in the past, but I prefer to to recall them to be sure that everything is clear for everybody. Okay. Okay, no questions. So I will just give us uh, a definition of a Markov process. So I don't know if uh, probably you have, uh, apparently you, you know what are Markov processes. Maybe it was just Markov process in um, finite space, state space or, or countable space. But here it is a general definition for Markov process in discrete time with values in some 
measurable space. Okay, so we say that the discrete time stochastic process Xn is a Markov process. Sometimes we say chain, Markov chain with state space E So with state space E, so it is a space in which our leading is a random variable Xn. So at each time Xn is in E. Um, if there exists a second of stochastic transition kernel Qn, which depends itself on time n, okay, depends on time. So transition kernel Qn is um, the thing that I defined before. So here it is Qn will be some application which will go from E times E and to Bx, it will associate some number Qn B given X. Okay, this is a definition that I gave before. And uh, we say that a process, the basic process is a Markov process. If when you look at the probabilities, the conditional probability that Xn plus one is in some uh, B, in some set B, given the previous history of the process. So Fn x is a sigma field generated by x0, xn. Then in fact, this conditional uh, probability depends only on the final state xn. So it is called the Markov probe. The fact that in fact, the state at step n plus one, the, pro the, the step at, at time n plus one, depends on the past only through the present n. And of this probability here, which a priori depend on n, has some property of it is a probability first, like every conditional probability. And moreover, you have some kind of measurability respect to this uh, variable, okay, which is encapsulated in the definition of a transition kern. So this is a definition of what is a Markov process on the general state space E. And in the discrete, uh, in the case where E is just uh, countable or finite, finite, you can represent this, um, this QN by just a matrix, matrix, transition matrix. But in general case, it is not uh, just a matrix if the space E is not countable. It is a transition kernel. So as I said before, this Q n depends on n. So in some some situation, Q n doesn't depend on n. So it is the same for at every time n. So it means that the law to pass from state n to state n plus one is the same as the law to 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 go from state zero to state one or from state one to state two. It is the same law at all times. So in this case, we have what we call some stationary or homogeneous Markov process. Okay, so I will use several times stationary, but you will also find in the literature this homogeneous, um, homogeneous term. Okay, and the first uh, property is the Markov property. The fact that the state at time n plus one depends on the previous state only through the present time n. Okay, so this is the definition of Markov processes. And then you can ask, if I give you some seconds of uh, transition kernel QN, is it, uh, does it exist a Markov process with these transition kernels? And the answer is uh, yes. And in fact, it is, uh, it is provided by some theorem. I will not prove this theorem. It is some theorem that maybe you saw in the past. Um, so purely a uh, measure theory theorem. Um, if you fix some priority, uh, priority measure on, um, on your state space E on QN some seconds of stochastic uh, kernels, then what we claim is that there exists a unique probability measure, um, a unique probability measure P, um, PU on EN. So E with um, this EN here, it is a seconds, it is a seconds xn, the chart for each n, xn is in, it is a, the set of seconds um, with values in, and that you equip with, so um, the product 
um, product um, sigma field that 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 if you consider some cylinder set okay b0 b1 b n and then e e e e until the end then there is some priority measure which p mu which is defined on this space which satisfies this um this property so it is some multiple integral you integrate on b0 b1 b2 bn so x0 is in b0 x1 b1 x2 in b2 and so on and um you start the random the 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 viable x not is with uh, low u and then x1 is distributed according to the law of x0 mu dx0 but then you integrate with a phase um, transition term and you continue like that until the end and of course if you see this formula you understand why in the definition of the transition kernel it was very important to assume these measure measurability conditions that match two properties one that the qn when you fix the the viable x it was uh, it was a probability but then you we also assume that when you fix uh, the b q b given x is measurable with respect to x and it is necessary because of why you cannot make the integration it is not measurable and uh, so here it is the existence of this probability p nu we depend on nu and on the qn of course and in particular you see if, uh, if you have the existence of this p nu and if you take um, xn you define it like this uh, process stochastic process defined on this um, probability sample space u for n just by associate the the hence uh, coordinates and um, uh, then um, you get uh, some um, stochastic process and the stochastic process is exactly a, ma a Markov process with the which satisfies this property there is some question no No question. Okay. So probably you have seen that in the past, maybe not in this uh, general context of where E is a general measurable space, but then mainly it is the same as um, the theory of Markov processes in the context of, um, of discrete space. Okay. And now I will finish this introduction and his um, comments on his uh, Markov processes and Martingales, uh, Markov processes and Martingale by his uh, just this slide, which is everything that you will have to know about Martingales. So first, there is a definition of Martingales. In fact, I should say it is not only Martingales; it is also Martingales, so Martingales, super Martingales. Okay, so um. Um, okay, so what is a martingale? So a martingale is some stochastic process, which uh, okay, depend, okay, it is defined in terms of some, some, some filtration. You have first to, to fix a filtration fn, so seconds, some increasing seconds of, um, of sigma fields. And you take the stochastic process deficit by uh, n, we say that it is a martingale if when you look at the uh, conditional expectation of x n plus one given the past fn then the his conditional expectation is exactly equal to xn so it is called martin and of course you have to assume that xn is in l1 so it is integrable because of why you cannot define this conditional expectation okay so it is the first thing to check if you want to check that something is a martingale you have first to check that you have a process which uh, with a random variable which are integrable and um and then martingale property is the one and then in the case where you replace this equality by some inequality in some sense or the other sense then you get what is called a super martingale which is this inequality here or a sub martingale and of course the process which is at the same time 
the super martingale and the sub martingale is a martingale. So you have the, the inequalities in both sides, in both sets. And then you have equality. So observe that uh, there is something which is quite trivial, which comes from the from the property of the of the expect conditional expectation that if you have some martingale, this thing imply if you apply the expectation on both sides that expectation of xn plus one is equal to the expectation of xn. So if you have a process which is a martingale, then in average it's uh, it doesn't change doesn't evolve with time but it is only in average otherwise it evolves it is a process which change from values but in average it is exactly um it uh, doesn't evolve with time and okay. here in the case of a super martingale you can do the same on that you have the expectation is decreasing with time and here if it is a soup soup martingale then the expectation in average, it is increasing with time. Okay, so in particular here, in the case of a martingale, you have the expectation of Xn plus one is equal to expectation of Xn. So expectation of Xn is constant equal to the initial expectation of X zero. So it is a definition of a martingale. So I would like to show you maybe to some example that you have seen them uh, before. So let me, just give you some example. Some example of a martingale. Um, basic example is um, yes. Consider the case where you have xn, which are i i d seconds of. Um, of um, ID seconds, so IID, identically, uh, independent, identically distributed random variable uh, of uh, random variables in L1. Okay, so the expectation of Xn, which is equal, since they are identically distributed as the expectation of X0 is finite. And uh, let me denote by mu, the expectation of Xn, then we have that if I define the process Sn, which is equal to the sum from k equals zero to n of xk minus n plus one mu, then I, I, I claim that Sn is a martingale with respect Okay, each time that you say martingale, in fact, you have to say martingale with respect to which filtration. It depends in the definition of martingale, you need the filtration. So what is the filtration? I would say that it is a filtration generated by natural filtration of the process generated with this random variable x is zero x. So it is what I called FNX, natural filtration. Okay, let us check that it is the case. Let us check that it is a martingale. So the first thing is SN is in L1 for each n because the xk are in L1 in L1 for each k. So it is done. And now I have to compute as a conditional expectation of Sn plus one given Fnx. Okay, and I have to show that it is equal to um, Sn. So what we have here, so it is expectation of the sum, k equals zero to n plus one, xk minus n plus one mu given f an x. And k use a property linear, linear, linearity um, of the condition expectation and the fact that the condition expectation of a constant is a constant. So here's the n plus one mu will be Um, so this n plus one mu will be here. And in this sum, which is a sum from k equals zero to n plus one, 
I can decompose it into terms. It is a sum from k equals zero to n plus xn plus one. So I will get expectation of xn plus one given fn x. Um, plus the conditional expectation of the sum from k equals zero to n of xk given fn x minus n plus one. Okay, but now since the fn x is a sigma field generated by x zero until x n, this guy is a deterministic function of x zero, x one, x two, x n. So it is fn x measurable. It is fn x measurable. So it means that the condition expectation is equal exactly to the same round variable. So it is sum from k equals zero to n of xk plus one mu. And here, now I use some second property. We know that xn, the, the xn are IID random variable. So xn plus one, in fact, is independent of this sigma field. So if it is independent of this sigma field, we have that the expectation of xn plus one given fn x is just a usual expectation. Expectation of xn plus one. And if you remember what is the definition of mu, mu is the expectation of xn. So in fact, uh, this guy is equal, this guy here is equal to mu. So at the end, I get mu plus some k equals zero to n of xk minus n plus one mu. So it's some simplification with the mu, sum from k equals zero to n of xk minus n mu. And so it is exactly SM. Okay. So if it's prove that it is a Martin, I prove that this conditional expectation, which is here, is equal to this one. Okay, so SN is a Martin. Okay, if I, instead of choosing a uh, mu here, you were choosing some different constant, depending if this constant is bigger than the expectation of Xn or slow, lower than the expectation of Xn, you will get some sub martingale or super martingale. Okay. So I will give you still some second example of martingale just to become a bit familiar with these uh, notions. Um, I will consider now um, a second, okay, I, I assume that, okay, I'm starting with, again, that um, x, x, n, um, b, i, i, d, a random variable. And I will assume that um, I will fix some theta in R. And um, I will assume that his xn have some exponential moment uh, of order theta, which is fine. Um, assume that the expectation of exponential theta x1 is a uh, finite. And I will denote it this guy as exponential lambda of theta, okay, this quantity, which is just a Laplace transformer of a uh, random variable x1 which is also the Laplace transform, of course, of the random variable Xn because they are identically distributed. And I consider now, um, zero here, I will consider um, this Mn, which is equal to expectation of the previous um, theta Sn, where Sn was a previous martingale, minus um, n plus one lambda of theta, okay? And I claim that this is, uh, this guy is a mark, and man is a mark. Okay, so I have two points to check. First, that it is satisfies the interability condition. I have to check that Mn is in L1. 
And then afterwards, I have to show that the conditional expectation of m n plus one given f n x, so I should say, respect to f n x, is uh, the conditional expectation of m n plus one given f n x is equal to m n. So how I do that? Okay, you have to check that they are in L1. So M n is a positive random variable, so I can compute the expectation. And what it is, it is okay. There is this constant, you can go out. Expectation of theta Sn. And Sn, if you remember, it is X0 plus Xn. So now you of course the property of the exponential of some is the product of exponential. And since they are all independent, you have the factorization of this expectation. This expectation of exponential theta x zero, expectation of theta xn. And each guy here is equal by definition to exponential of lambda theta. Okay, and this one also. And there are n plus one term here is a product composed of n plus one terms. So at the end, what I would get is that it is equal to exponential minus n plus one lambda theta, exponential n plus one lambda theta, which is equal to one, which is finite. So mn is in L1, okay? So it is the first point, and now I have to check the second one, which is a bit similar to what I did previously. I want to compute the expectation of mn plus one given fnx, which is equal to what? It is equal to the expectation of exponential theta um, x zero plus Sen minus n plus one lambda theta given f and x. Of course, as you can see, if this guy here, okay, I can write this exponential, it is exponential of some sums. So I will write it like a product of exponential and as a, the exponential of this guy is just a constant, so it would go out. So I will get exponential minus n plus one lambda theta, exponential of exponential theta x zero, exponential theta xn. Uh, sorry, I did some mistake. It didn't tell me it is n plus one here because it is m n plus one, and here it is n plus two. Same here. Theta x n plus one given f and x. Okay, now if you look at these uh, these guys, you observe that this term here depends only on x zero, x two, x n. So it means that it is measurable with respect to this uh, sigma field. So it can go outside. It's just a, it can go outside of this uh, expectation conditional expectation. So it is equal to exponential minus n plus two lambda theta um, expectation. Sorry. Can go out, so I write it now. Theta x zero, theta xn. And here I get expectation of exponential theta x one plus one given f and x. But um, this, uh, here, the, the random variable xn plus one is independent of this, um, this sigma field. Because I, start, I was starting with independent random variable. So it means that the conditional expectation is equal to the normal expectation. So I get 
it's pronounced minus and plus two lambda theta. This one theta is zero, exponential of theta xn. And here it is just um, the expectation of exponential theta xn plus one, which by definition, this guy is just a Laplace transform of xn plus one. It is what I denoted exponential lambda theta. And so you see there is some um, simplification here between this guy and this guy. So at the end, what I get, exponential minus n lambda theta, exponential, okay, I can write it directly. Can we write this exponential plus theta x0 plus x1 plus x2 plus xn, which is theta x, which is exactly the definition of m. So I brought that in this case, um, you have that expectation of mn plus one given fn x equal to mn. So it is a marking. Of course, if you um, choose different constant, you can, if theta here is different and so on, you can get some sub or super -marking. In particular, you recover the fact that if you take since it is a martingale, I know that the expectation of Mn is constant and is equal to the expectation of M0, which is just expectation of exponential theta at zero minus um, lambda theta. And since it is exponential of lambda theta exponential minus lambda theta is equal to one. Okay, which is something that we have seen previously. Okay, this is just a basic example of martingale, but martingales are very important in um, many applications, not only in finance, but uh, in all probability theory, it is very, very important uh, um, kind of processes, as important as Markov process. Okay, just this was to give you some example of martingales. And uh, before uh, the break, I have to make a break. Yes, I would like just to finish by um, by uh, some theorem about uh, martingales. Um, so, um, so uh, this, uh, this is um, what we call the optional stopping theorem and the convergence theorem. So, the good, the good, um, the good to have is a kind of theorem. You need some assumption on the martingale. The fact that they are in L1 is not sufficient. In fact, to assure that, for example, the martingale is converging. Um, so what we, so I, there are many different uh, theorem of convergence and uh, optional stopping theorem. So I give just one, one theorem that you can um, find many variations. So the, the assumptions that I will do is that I will assume that this, um, this martingale or this sub martingale or super martingale are, um, are uniformly integrable. So what means to be uniformly integrable? It means what is uh, written here. It means that when you take the limit as A goes to infinity of the supremum over M, okay, it is a reason for which it is called uniformly, then the and uh, you take the expectation of xn times the, the indicator function of xn bigger than a, then this guy goes to zero. So of course, if you have only one random variable, if x is in L1, by the dominated convergence theorem, you know that the limit as a goes to infinity of the expectation of x indicator of x bigger than a, is zero by the dominated convergence theorem because okay x if is a random variable is independently of a it is bounded by absolute value of x which is integrable and if is as a goes to infinity p almost surely if is a random variable is going to zero so by the dominated convergence theorem you know that this limit is equal to zero but here it is stronger than that because you ask that it has to be true when you take the supremum over all the random bytes. Okay, so um, so it is a reason for which it is uniform. And then, if you have this assumption, um, so I wrote it 
only for submartingale, but of course a martingale is some special case of submartingale. If you have a martingale, it is of course some submartingale. But uh, for a submartingale, it is also true. And uh, if you have a supermartingale, in fact, minus the supermartingale becomes the submartingale. So I could enunciate it in different ways. So if you have uniform integrability, then you have the what is convergence theorem, Dube's convergence theorem is called from the mathematician Dube, which is that um, this, um, this Xn converge almost surely and in L1 to a random variable X infinity, which is also in L1. Okay, so it is some convergence theorem of a sequence of random variables. And which holds in L1 and almost sure. And so this is the first one. So it is important to us from convergence of uh, sequence of random variables, it is very practical. And the second one is, um, it is a Dupes option stopping theorem. So if you look at, um, so it is for submartingle. So it is this case here, you have submartingle. So when you have submartingle, what we have seen is that if you take, um, the expectation of Xn plus one is bigger than the expectation of Xn. And so if you do it um, for uh, step by step, you, you deduce that expectation of Xn by induction is bigger than the expectation of X naught. Okay. So now you can ask, is this property true if N now is random, is a random time? So mm, in principle, it is not true. If you take just, you ask just n to be a random time, but if you assume that n is a stopping time, then this becomes true even if you replace m by the stopping time tau. So it is called the optional stopping theorem, which has many applications. It is, you, you take two a stopping time, fn stopping time, respect to the filtration, uh, which is, which is um, that you have in the definition of uh, Martinus. Or submartingles. And then you define some um, random variable x tau. Okay, tau, you have to remember that uh, tau can be infinite, can take the value plus infinity. So, what means x indexed by plus infinity? It means the following. So, if tau is finite, you just say that x tau of omega at uh, omega. Omega is the point in the priority space, capital omega. But if tau here, tau omega is equal to infinity, what you do is just, you say that it is x infinity of omega, where x infinity is this random variable that you have in the dupes uh, convergence theorem. So it defines some new random variable, which turns out to be integrable because x infinity is in L1, in fact, and if it's one, okay, you can check that it is also in L1. And you add that, what I said before here, you add, this, um, this property, which was uh, true for any deterministic time n, now it is also true for the random time tau with this precise definition of what is x tau. So expectation of x tau is bigger than the expectation of x zero. Okay. So it is only this slide on martingales. I will not use uh, more about the theory of martingales. And I will not prove these uh, two theorems because it is not the main topic of this, um, of this course, but you can find the proof everywhere. In fact, we will see in the um, training sessions some proof of uh, this optional stopping theorem under some, some conditions. Um, okay. So I will, sorry, I take a little bit more time. So uh, maybe we can make a break of around 10 minutes and we come back uh, here to for the uh, for uh, some exercises where we will um, exercises about his um, his condition expectation mark of chains and martin author okay for everybody if we start in 10 minutes again if you survive Yes. Yeah, I'll stop recording for now, I suppose. Yeah. As you wish, yes. Otherwise, there will be 10 minutes of nothing. Okay. 
So we see a 